Hey everybody! So as indicated in my last video, we are just in full spectacular bloom right now. And I thought this would be a good moment to share a few strategies that we employ around here for managing tall plants. Because a lot of our natives are tall. There are plenty of short, but if you're in a fertile soil area, even the short plants are probably going to get tall. At least that's what we've experienced here. So I'm just going to go about the video and pause it here and there. And we'll go take a couple looks at a couple different areas. And maybe some of these will work out for you. So our first one is to embrace the tall. Embrace the jungle. Stop trying to have everything stand up straight. Because that's not what they do in nature. And I did a video a long time ago on tippy plants that I will put at the end of this video. That's always where I'm putting the links is as an end screen, so I'm hoping that you can see those. But the tippy plants serve a ecological function, so embrace that wherever you can. Right here with this table, the tippy plants actually create a really wonderful little nook. I love to sit there. Steve loves to sit there. We'll have coffee. I'll write. We'll eat food. And especially when the mosquitoes aren't bad, which they kind of are right now. But when they're not, we'll sit there and then you get up close and personal with the plants and the hosts that they are to all of the insects, including those beautiful butterflies everybody loves. And even the bees and they don't care about you because you're not a flower and you're surrounded by flowers. So I actually also think it's really beautiful. I love the way these plants just create this little alcove for this table. So that's one. Another is, depending on what size land you're on, shut some trails down during this season. So we have 3.5 acres, but up here by our house, um, we have a lot of trails too, and some of them we just don't use once we reach a certain point in the season. And there's actually a path that goes right by this chair here and wraps around the back side of the wildflower area and goes by that walnut and those spice bush. And we kept it open for several years, and then we thought, well, why? I mean, it's just the two of us. We don't need this many paths every season. So it's a useful path and we'll use it in the non-growing season. Another thing to remember and that I've really noticed as we've lived here is that when you're in full bloom, when the plants are in full bloom, they're really at about their heaviest they're going to be. So they put their flowers on and then they put their seeds on and as soon as they put those seeds on the whole plant starts drying down it starts losing moisture and getting lighter and lighter and lighter so then a lot of them you can easily push back out of your way or they will move on their own so just remember that part okay so there we go embrace it shut a few trails down now let's go take a look at some other ideas before I go out and show you the next one, I just wanted to show you one of the benefits of having tall plants around your house. You get to sit amongst the plants indoors. And so if it's mosquito-y out, then all the butterflies and the birds, the common yellow throats and the goldfinches and the house wrens, they all come to you. And you just really get to sit in this charmed area. And so, Leaving some plants, some tall plants out around your windows and around your house can be very inspirational for when you have to be inside to do your house chores or to visit with your kitty cats or to stay away from the mosquitoes. Here's an example of a short plant that I actually don't like how it's doing next to a path. Our front walkway is very narrow. And so I always go through here and prune and just keep it single file. And I'm careful about when I prune. A rule of thumb often is like May 15th and July 15th or around thereabouts. 
you just don't want to cut the whole flower head off of certain plants like right now if I was to go cut off cut plant flowers they're not going to be able to put them back on again at a shorter level but a lot of them can if you do goldenrod and uh, New England aster earlier in the season they will put flower heads on but they will also branch so I have found that sometimes it's better to leave them tall and just tuck them back in than cut them off you always got to think but wild onion nodding wild onion is a really cool plant for many different pollinators and we put it in here thinking oh that's nice for next to the path because it's a short plant well it is short but not so short so you can see due to its wiry habit it really just kind of hangs out in the path so i let them go there and then once they put seeds on we'll trim some back out of here because we don't want our male woman to have to deal with vegetation all the time okay so that's one i'm like eh, i don't know short plants okay tall plants i can manage <laughs> here's what we're doing over here let me go show you so this is the area that I showed you last week that's just in spectacular bloom. And we have a fence that we pulled out of the trash a long time ago that we just love. And that really helped keep plants back that were really tall. But because so many cool plants sprout on the side or come up through the fence, I have taken to using just hemp string at a certain point. And you can see that I just did a simple knot right there around the fence and then come along now you can use and I have used before different colors black or other things that are less visible but I had some turquoise right now and so it's kind of nice for me to show you this because I just come along and then every now and again you can see I just go right behind the fence so that you don't have too long of a stretch because if you do then the string is just going to pooch out so that's it and then on one end which i haven't cut my extra off yet i just make one of those bites and then you can actually adjust your string as the season goes on if you want to so let me take a step back and show you this is next to our driveway so it's a helpful place to not have all the plants laying. Because like I said, if you cut the cut plant flowers off right now, they're going to go away. And that would be a travesty because look how beautiful it is. Okay, we're going to go out to the old field and see something we're doing out there. As we're heading to the next spot, I just thought I'd show you one here that is a mowed path. And mowing honestly is the easiest way to keep paths open without chemicals and we don't like edging here because then you have to weed whip unless you don't mind plants growing up next to them and I killed a snake with a weed whip about eight years ago and that's the last time we use weed whips around here so mowing think curvy edges and not being able to see where you go and maybe just monitoring what plants you put next to the path because as you'll see we put some really tall ones right next to the path so we have to employ a strategy out there okay so strategy number one for the cut plants that we put right by the old field path is just some simple stakes i think my camera is really clicking in and out and i'm sorry about that i don't know what is happening my phone might be heading on its way out but there's the stake we drove them in about that far apart and just wound twine around and it serves as a really simple makeshift fence very easy and works brilliantly i'm going to show you one more piece and then we'll call this video done because it's not looking so good friends <laughs> All right, here's the last one for the day. And I told Steve that sometimes I think the cup plants are saying, what about my dignity? Because <laughs> some of these we've tied really tight and they look funny, but they tend to splay out. So we put these right next to the path and they just, when they get heavy with all those flowers, then the stalks start to splay out. And like I said, 
They're about at their heaviest and very soon they will start to dry down. But to keep them upright when they're next to the path like this, we just tie them in a big bouquet. Yes, their dignity might be a little compromised, but they're still able to flower and set seed. So I hope these couple of strategies might help you all in thinking about what to do at your place. Let us know if you have any other ideas. We would love to know.